In this video, I'm gonna take you behind the scenes how I photographed and lit the very first episode of my brand new YouTube series. Hey everyone, my name is Tommy Reynolds. Welcome back to the channel. So if you haven't yet seen the very first episode of my new YouTube series, then just click the card up there and that will take you to the very first episode if you haven't already seen it. But before I break down all the technical details of how we shot and lit this video, I just want to explain to you why I even did this. When I go traveling especially, and also when, when I'm back here at home, when I'm doing a portrait, I like to in the caption, I like to give you guys their name, their age, what they're about, what struggles are they going through right now. I believe it just adds so much more value and context to the image and makes you appreciate it even more when you know the background of, of my subjects. And when I came to do this photo shoot, I thought it's not enough for me to tell it. I think you need to hear it directly from Holly. Holly has an amazing attitude to life and that's why when I was planning this, I thought as well as the nice B-roll stuff of the behind the scenes, we also see the nice interview that we did with Holly. And I know, I know I've gone for an eye test recently. My eyes are getting worse. It's just going downhill for me, isn't it? I'm ginger, I'm deaf, and now my eyes are going. So... <laughs> Livid! <laughs> and I knew that Holly would be a great, great subject for this. She's, uh, she's just got a great attitude to life and I know that you'll just fall in love with her when you watch the video. And that's why when I was planning this, I decided that this should be a YouTube series. It's going to be about real people, real stories. It's, it's nothing glamour, there's no, it's not fashion. It's just telling a story from a real person about their real life experience. So, when it comes to continuous lighting, I use continuous lighting all the time, really. I use it when I'm even filming YouTube videos like this. Up until now, I've been using this one. This is the Pixapro LED 200D Mark II. I've used this for years now. I've used it on a bunch of behind the scenes videos in the past. I even used it in the same location that we shot Holly a couple of years ago when I filmed my best friend, Jamie Johnson. And you can make your heart feel something that it won't And here in the dark Absolutely great light, I've used it for years, but for this shoot we didn't actually use this. We used a brand new light. We used the LED 200B Mark III. So this, that was the Mark II. This one is the Mark III. Really, really great light. It's the same power as this one here. So this is also 2000 watts. But because it's the bicolor, you get 2000 watts in daylight and you get 2000 watts in tungsten. So it's kind of like having two of these in one of these. So for Holly's setup, for Holly's key light, we used a 150 centimeter easy open softbox. And that is another reason why we use this is because it has the S type uh, Bowen's adapter on it. That's why I always go for this over LED panels because I can have so much flexibility put in any modifier I want. I could put a 60 centimeter on there or I could put a 170 centimeter softbox on there. So that's why this was my choice for her key light. For her backlight, we used another one of these, but this one was, but it was at a thousand watts. So it's half the size of this. I would show you it, but it's actually being used to light me right now. And again, that one's also bicolor. And because it's bicolor, we ended up flicking that to all the way over to tungsten balance. So when we had it behind Holly, just over her shoulder, we had it almost coming in from this direction. So it almost was coming through the window. And at some parts, you can almost mistake that light as maybe the sun flaring into the camera. So that's why we chose to have the backlight make it tungsten balanced because it felt more motivated. So that's really nice about the Mark III's is the, is the bicolor, whereas this one was just daylight balance. If we needed to make this tungsten balance, then we'd have to put a gel over it. But the Mark III's just now have the bicolor and they're also less noisy as well. So this one has a little bit of a humming fan, which is fine if you're doing lapel stuff, but if you are doing stuff with, where we were using a very sensitive microphone up, up here, then it was better that we used this one's here. Another great thing about all the Mark III's is they have this really cool memory bank system here. So I can, if I want to, dial in the color, and these are dimmable as well, 
So I go all the way to 10%, all the way up to 100%. Well, you can see just how bright this thing really does go. And what's nice is I can now bank that. So let's put it to a something like that. I can bank that to number three if I want to, hold my finger down. And now if I start fiddling around and messing around with it, I press number three and it goes straight back to where we had it last. Really great feature. You can see where we go from all the way, whoo, there you go, all the way from tungsten, all the way to daylight. That's why it was a go-to choice. You can see the, uh, the panel right there, it looks pretty cool. <laughs> so that is the LED 200B Mark III. And in terms of the audio, um, I have to write it down because I always forget it. Um, we had a microphone, which was the Rode NTG2. And that was plugged into the Tascam DR60D Mark II. Really, really great audio. I've never really used this kind of audio setup before. To be honest, everything I do is all lapel. And if you look closely, we did actually put a lapel on Holly because I had envisioned merging the two audios together, or at the very least, it was a backup. And that's always a good tip. Always have a backup audio because if that goes, you've literally lost it because it's surprising how important audio really is to your videos. You can get away with bad video, but you can't get away with bad audio, if that makes sense. And the Rode NTG2 was just perfect. It was a little shotgun mic that we put inside a, a blimp, I think Mike called it. You don't really hear too much of the ambient noise in and around, but the sound quality was just so much better than this lapel mic that I usually use. So really pleased that we used that setup. If I had to give anyone advice, really, it would just be don't give up because you know it can be really, really hard. If you're deaf and you're trying to find just a normal nine to five job, it's hard, but you can do it. You can absolutely do it. You can do anything you want and no one should tell you you can't because you're much stronger than that. And I heard a quote recently, I think I told you the other week, um, it was at the Golden Globes and he said, believe in yourself because other people do. Now our main camera was a 5D Mark IV. The reason we chose that was because we wanted to have that continuous autofocus that the Mark IV has. That was placed on top of a Rhino slider, which is a motorized slider, which just goes from left to right in a time that you can specify, it's up to you. I think we ended up having it like taking 25 seconds or something to go from literally A to B. So nice and slow movements. Even in post-production, I added a slight zoom. So I scaled the shot in very slightly. So again, that just adds a little bit more movement to the shot. Our B camera was Mike's Sony FS5, and that was on sticks, that was on his Miller tripod. Now Mike was shooting in 4K, which was nice for me in the edit. I can zoom in, I can crop out, I can do whatever. I could do loads with 4K footage. So that's a really good tip. If you wanna um, manipulate and crop and move in and around your shot, then shoot in 4K if you can and output it to 1080p, which is what we did. By the way, I don't own the Rhino slider, but if you do wanna borrow one, which we did, I use an app called Fat Llama. So you're not borrowing it from a, a proper rental agency, which could cost you a lot. It's kind of like eBay. You, uh, you're, it's, you're, you're interacting with real people, but instead of buying it, you're just borrowing it. The lens we used on the Canon, the one that was on the Rhino slider, was a 50 millimeter Sigma Art. And on the Sony FS5 camera was the 100 millimeter macro Canon. All right, so let's talk about the stills. I used my camera, which was the 5D Mark III, and the lenses I used was either a 35 millimeter Art Sigma, uh, 50 Sigma, or a Canon 100 mm macro. The strobes we used was the Pixapro City 600 Pro, which is a fantastic battery powered flash. If you want a decent, reliable, professional system, then that is the one to go for. The backlights used was the Pika 200, and quite often I like to backlight with a beauty dish, and I like to put a half CTO gel in there as well. We used a gravity background, which was a, a mid-gray background on some Pixapro C stands. And the fill light I used was the Ricoh 400 ring flash. It's my go-to ring flash, Mr. Phil, as you know I like to call it. It's my get out of jail if I wanna fill in any shadows. It's attached to my camera so I don't need to put another light stand, another light, and another modifier on. And then later on in the shoot, we used the beauty dish as our key light. This time I put the grid and the sock on at the same time. This is one of my favorite go-tos when I'm using a beauty dish. 
when you have the grid and the sock on, it means that the light quality isn't too spread out and it's not too focused and gives it that harsh circle in the background. So it just kind of feathers it out slightly, but still gives you a nice and natural, almost vignette effect because it's not too spread out. So that is my go-to. If you've never tried that, maybe give that a go for your next personal project using the beauty dish with the grid and the sock on at the same time. Oh, the other camera I didn't mention was the Hasselblad, this one right here. I used the Hasselblad 500cm for my favorite photograph that I took from that shoot. So this is the 150 millimeter lens. It's also got a 16 millimeter extension tube here, which allows me just to focus a little bit closer in. It was the first time I had ever attached my ring flash to this Hasselblad camera and I'm really pleased with the result. It, I did actually end up, end up breaking uh, the cheap plastic lens hood though because it didn't quite fit properly so I'll, I'll need to modify that um, somehow. But the film I used was Tri-X 400 film in this. That's my go-to film, I love that. So uh, if you wanna get into medium format or just 35 millimeter, I would go for that as the black and white option. It's a beautiful, beautiful film. The only problem with 120 film is you only have 12 shots in the can. Unlike 35 millimeter where you have maybe 36 shots, with this you only have 12 shots and that's it. I only used two rolls of film and I actually messed one of them up um, when I was trying to take it out. So I only had 12 shots to pick and I picked my favorite two which are featured in the video. And what I love most about this video is the, the message of, well for me the photography is the connection you can make with people and at the end of the video um, I gave Holly a nice big hug and it was just really nice to connect with another human being especially when I can do it holding a camera in my hand and because of these these personal projects I'm doing I'm going to look back on a very proud and creatively fulfilling career so if you want to get out of your comfort zone try it something that isn't for yourself get out of your own head don't do it for you stop thinking you 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 how can you make you look better how can i make my business look better how can i make more money instead try doing a good deed with your camera use your skill to better someone else's life or just to give a message to the world and i promise you you will never feel more creatively fulfilled than when you're using your skill to help someone else out so give that a go, that'll be your assignment for this month. Don't worry about contacting modeling agencies, just try photographing your mum or your dad or your nan as a starting point and tell their story. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you liked it, then please make sure you hit the like or share button or subscribe if you're watching this on YouTube. And as always, I will see you again next time. Cheers guys, bye bye.